Alright, so welcome back. This is dark mode. Um, so let's go to the dark side. So dark mode um, in my build kit uh, utilizes this little little JavaScript nugget. So what we do, um, we use local storage basically. Um, where are we at here? Local storage. So we set a variable in our local storage, and uh, actually, I'm not even trying to explain this. I'm not very good at JavaScript. I was able to put this together. I, I'm I'm surprised I was able to put this together fairly. Um, but basically, we have our enable dark mode function and our disable dark mode function. So um, local storage. I guess I'm just going to try it as a you know a key value pair, right? So uh, we set enable dark mode. We set dark mode to be enabled, right? And that's that's its value. Um, and when we disable it, we set I local storage set item. So we set it to null. So it it's it's not it it's not enabled. It's it's not there. Um, so we add an event listener to the dark mode toggle. When we click, uh, we get. So dark mode equals whatever local store, whatever the value of dark mode is in local storage. So we, we grab that. And if dark mode is not enabled, so it's null, uh, then run the enable dark mode function. Else, if it is enabled, so if it does have the enabled value uh, added to it, then run the disable dark mode uh, function, which will uh, set dark mode to null. So that's essentially what's happening. Um, and when we do that, uh, we use a body.darkmode style. So it, it um, when dark mode is set to enabled, um, we add a class of dark mode to the body. So if we look in here, right now the body doesn't have a class on it. When I hit dark mode, the body now has a class of dark mode on it. And um, any any CSS that is per, um, prefixed by body.darkmode will run. So like uh, this nav bar, uh, this is in my dark, dark mode system. So body.darkmode, and so when the when the dark mode class is on the body, we target the navigation background div color and change it to the dark. And that's how dark mode's going to work. So um let's just let's just let's ignore the navigation for now let's just roll up and down um our uh our document here so right away i notice that our h's are all um black still so let's go to dark so in here in dark.css doc uh, dark dot less or dark.css if you're using css we have some base functions. So this um, this covers the dark mode toggle. So this makes this work, right? Um, and then this is just the core dark mode styles, which sets the, the navigation. Uh, it sets the body background and the text to white. So it just takes care of uh, some basic stuff. Uh, and looks like, yeah, so I already set it to white, but they're being overridden. Uh, and then like, so body.dark mode, anything that has a light class on it will be hidden and anything that has a dark class on it will be blocked. So if I want something to show up on, you know, light mode, um, I just give it a class of light. And if I want it to swap with something else, I set that something else to dark. Uh, I, I add a class of dark to it so that when I do toggle this, um, the dark class is now display block but the light class is display none. That's how I do the um, uh, this logo up here. So this logo, let me scroll down here. Logo, here we go, image, class, light, class, dark. So that's kind of like a little mini framework I guess I have that if I wanted to uh, add this dot light class modifier, as it would be called in BEM, B-E-M, uh, class naming convention. Um, these these are modifiers that will uh, do a little extra stuff. 
So right away, this is my initial dark mode is like this bluish thing. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I think all of our H's to these allies. Um, let's just add an important. Because rather than going into every single um, section and adding specific dark mode classes for each one, eh, it just seems that's a lot of work. So um, same thing with these toppers. Let's see what the, uh, the contrast ratio is too low. So let's do a dot topper. Color is going to be var primary accessible. And again, um, it's being overridden. I want to override all of them. And again, don't use important. You shouldn't use important. It's just um, I'm doing it here because it's such a small scale uh, website. Because if you're trying to work. Uh, you're building something with a team, you're working in a company, and uh, you put an important out there, and you have this large, you know, hundreds of pages document with lots of CSS sheets, etc. Um, this, you know, this can cause a problem. But since this is a very small self-contained website, and I know exactly where these things are and what they're doing, and it's just me that's going to be managing this, I'm doing it because, um, you know, that's just my decision. Um, but... You know, if you're working in a, on a on any big projects with a team and other people have to edit your code and your your code has to be meshed with other style sheets to work with other things, don't use important. Just just take the extra time and, and be more specific in your uh, queries. So um, that's yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Maybe that's like lessons. Well, so like, I mean, how specific is it? Like, I think I have to get down to the ID level. to get down to the ID level. So I'm just going to override it here instead of having to do it a whole bunch of times in the whole document. Um, and so number one, we see this, this, um, this border. It's not what we want. So uh, let's scroll up. Let's get us ourselves some room over here. I add dark mode styles on my style sheet where everything, like, uh, so like uh, if we're on, um, this is the first section. So this is going to be uh, lessons, piano lessons. I will make a separate media query for dark mode underneath it. Just to keep it together and organized, and this is going to be zero. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm just going to put that right there. So here, um, let's let's get the path. So it's lessons, image group, picture, image. So we go lessons, dot image group, picture, oops, image. And we want to change that border. How many pixels is it? Where's that border? Or is it on the picture itself? I think it's on the picture element. Yeah, it's on the, uh, oh, dot little picture. So let's get rid of that. Dot little picture, and uh, we're just going to, how much is that? Five pixels, five divided by 16. And we're going to jack that, and we're going to change that to, um, think yeah yeah background color dark so it's gonna be dark and um, if you if you look very closely you'll see there's like a there's like a gap between the image and and the uh, the border that's gonna happen sometimes so let's also on the uh, picture element let's set the background color color, specifically background color, to dark as well. 
and that will fill that in. Uh, I don't know if you saw that fill in, but now there's not a uh, there's not a gap between the border and the image. So if you ever notice that in any of your work, there's a there's like a, a one pixel gap between your image's border and the actual image, and it's you can see the background behind it. Just add a background color to your uh, image, and that'll fix it. it. It has to be the same color as the border. Uh, so that's done. Um, and now uh, we're coming down here. We got these. We got these borders to deal with. So um, let's just copy and paste this dark mode. I think this is the next section. So let's find out what your pathway is. Okay, so history, image group little picture. Oh, little picture top. That's done. Um, and then you, little picture bottom. And then this is just a result of the image. So let's um, let's crop it, shall we? Just a little bit. I think we can come down a little more. A little bit right there. Let's save that as um, there you go. That looks a little better. This image is a little wonky. Let's fix that with a minor crop. There we go. Now that looks better. We just had to crop our images a little bit. So that's taken care of. That is fine. Uh, now we got to get to here. So this is our uh, opportunities, experience opportunities. I'm gonna grab this. And we're gonna get the background. So it's gonna be opportunities, card group, card. And we're going to set the uh, background. What is, what is it using? Is it using background color? Yeah, it's using background dash color. So we have to use that as well. And let's, uh, in the dark mode, I have three levels. So dark is the darkest, which is the background. And then as you move up on the DOM, you have medium and then accent. So these would be medium because they're on top of the dark. They're the next layer. So I will add this as a var medium. And I already have these colors picked out so that um, it's uh, like they, they match, they work together. And so now we got to change this uh, A tag. Let's see what it's card group A. Change that to white. And that's fine. And we're over onto here. So this needs to have a darker background. Um, so we're on the quote. Let's let's change the before element. Because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Nope, that's not it. All right, let's find out. Quote. Oh, I forgot. And. Okay, so that's better. 
Um, this line up here, this is just a, a glitch in the Google Dev Tools. Like when we zoom out in and out, it doesn't matter. That's not actually in the site. Uh, this looks pretty neat. I like the red, white, and blue. Uh, then we get our name here. This has to be white. So quote dot name. There we go. You see how easy it is. All I gotta do. Oh shoot. They all have to be preceded by body dot dark mode. Dummy. So what's happening is this is a CSS selector. So dark mode, uh, when dark mode is added to the body, then run these classes, right? Run this, override this. Um, when dark mode is not on the body, this is no longer true. So these don't get run. And that's the uh, core mechanic behind my dark mode. Um, because, you know, there's... Yeah, you can use the uh, the media query prefers dark. Um, you know that there's a lot of other um, tools out there that claim, yeah, add dark mode in one line of code, blah blah blah. Well, that's great, but it doesn't really. I mean, it, you you have a custom site here that's custom designed and built. Um, one line of code is not going to cover everything. Like you need to be able to target things specifically, and especially if you want to make a more unique and cohesive dark mode, you're going to have to do it like this manually you're going to have to you know pick which styles you want to only load on dark mode and make which changes you want so that's 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 how you make a a more unique site instead of just doing the bare minimum just do what makes the job um you know the best that it can be so we got these guys um let's make that background color Let's make that one. Um, so actually, I'm just going to copy this really quick. So I got to put that in here. But then I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to copy that. So I got to go to meet, add our dark mode. So meet uh, dot card group. And that's going to be dot card. And that's int, int of type four. And that's going to be the picture element. So the fourth card picture element, your background color is now going to be var medium. There. And now we need to target our name. So card dot name white. And then we need our card dot title. So let's just save a line and let's just copy our comma dot title. And that's that's done. And this is fine. That's done. Uh, let's get into here. This is obviously going to be our um, our medium color. I think your quote dot quote. And that is the um, four element actually. Background color var medium. And there's that. So you see how they um like these colors play off of each other. Um, and then this, this is still that black. It's like that, let's, let's make that darker. So let's go to, um, let's go to root. And 
There's our footer. There's our dark mode. Let's do a footer. Background color. Let's do a harsh, a darker black. And yeah, night, night time that up. Um, so we got that. And that, while we're in the, uh, the while we're here, let's go ahead and fix this. This is um, it's not good enough. Value dot dark mode mobile. So on mobile, um, let's see what it looks like on mobile actually. So that we don't. Well, okay, the color should be. Um, Okay, that's 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 easier. And we got this uh, little little pseudo down here. That's the uh, accent color. We're going to change that to primary accessible as well. That's a little better. So we'll take that and now let's do this on. Um, Dark mode desktop. So we have to change these to primary accessible. Primary accessible. And there we have it. That's better. So that 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 um, that that is seen easier. Um, so we got that. Um, I guess we can make this darker, right? Close that. Let's go back to local. No, we're in critical now. Let's zoom here. Oops. Let's copy. And that's going to be hero before. I'm going to change its opacity to 0.7. Uh, 9. Yeah, we'll make it a little darker. Okay, and that's it for that. Um, dark mode is now enabled. Um, I think that's it for this one. So I, um, as an update from the last video, uh, I did add all of the interior pages. Uh, so that's what we're going to go through now. So we did home. We did home. Now let's go to about. And looks like that's taken care of. So now we got to deal with these. So we got the about page. Um, So here's the template. So I think the only thing we need to change is the value of Michael and Jean. Background color var medium. And there we go. And then we just go to reviews. Oops. Copy, paste. And it's going to be reviews uh, dot quote and before whoops background color bar medium and that's done. All right, so that page is done. Now we go to programs, and uh, if you remember from the last video, um, I was putting. Um, I was putting the code dally method. Uh, oh no, I was it was um, opportunities. I was putting opportunities. Each one had its own page. I ended up putting them all on their on one page. Um, and I did that 
because he wanted to have a whole he wanted to have a page where they were all there so instead of having separate pages we have an opportunities tab and on home uh these guys link to their spot on the on that page so there's there's anchor um anchor tags so competitions will take you to competitions um playing with orchestras will take you to playing with orchestras and chamber music will take you to chamber music and the way you do that um just because why not why not show you how i did that we use it's uh it's called an anchor tag so like id master class it's just wherever you want the um the page to load at so on index so like opportunities.html and then you do your your id hashtag concerts and recitals and concerts and recitals are down here i think no concerts and recitals are here so but when i put it when i put it on the h2 um it's like it's 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 like down here it's like covered by the top so i put the anchor tag for uh concerts and recitals on the p tag right here um and what that does is when i click on it it puts concerts and recitals right where i want it um so it's just they don't have to be on the exact um you know h2 that you're trying to uh, link to you just have to put them where you want the page to to be reset at so i i put it up here because i want the page to reset up here so it's like it's it's the top the p is going to be the top but it's covered by the navigation and i want some space you know so yeah so we just put the uh we just put the anchor above it and then we just link to that that's how that worked but it looks like all these interior pages are are pretty much taken care of um same with programs this is an extra page opportunities are good gallery is good uh gallery is not good why is um that's not how it's supposed to look mm -hmm. This one. Okay, see, this is what it's supposed to look like at this screen size. So I think I got to grab it from Copper Top. Um, so we're in Neotext right now. Let's uh, let's open up Copper Top. I think I just got to grab that code. Uh, man, we're gonna go to local. Portfolio. Let's just grab that and let's see if that fixes my problem. So that's going to be in projects.less portfolio paste. Yeah, see, that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, and I don't think we need a dark mode. Unless we do. This is the body. Oh, that's because I have a background on it. Let's get rid of that. Cool. And then let's do the. Um, let's just let's just grab. While we're at it. Let's clamp this. And that way we can we actually just get rid of this. Um, so let's change these to nine so that they uh, expand a little more. There we go, a little more space, and that's cool. That's cool. I'm gonna have to update my build kit for this um, updated updated code because that's not acceptable. Uh, but yeah, here's the um, this is the gallery page. Oh, look at this. I got it uh, on scroll. That changes why. So let's get out of projects. Let's go to root. Uh, so um, 
So this is a body that scroll. Body that scroll. So we have to set this in dark mode. Dark mode, navigation. So now we need to do body dot scroll because that that scroll class is overriding. So I need a navigation and then nav bar menu and then ul li a uh, it's getting really really in there uh and active clipboard and before okay there it is and uh background that's going to stay var primary accessible Still not working. Body that dark mode. Oh, because I got body here. That should be and. There we go. So when we when the body has the class of dark mode and the class of scroll, go down this uh, this selector to to get to the uh, active class and change and and keep it primary accessible. So that way that stays. And now to contact, which I, yeah, I did. I just ripped it from, uh, I ripped it from um, Start Your Line. And so you could see me watch that in that video, um, the uh, the Neotex video. So I just, yeah, I just totally jacked, I just jacked it. Um, but interesting choice on the button. By a dark mode landing context. This is in the context CSS. And so it's it's doing its own dark mode thing. Contact. All right, here's our button. Colors should just be primary. We can see the button. Or, you know, let's not even, not even do it at all. Let's just remove that. That's fine. And I thought I, thought I worked on this. Um, let's just reduce this. There you go. Oh, we got a padding bottom on the contact. Let's remove that. That should not be there. Um, and that is coming from padding bottom, landing contact on zero. Landing. Landing contact, padding bottom zero. There you go, that's a little better. Yeah, when uh, when we pop it out, so this is the full, this is the full dark mode. Um, so let's let's also fix that. That shouldn't be like that. That's a that's a weird color for this. So um, we're on dark mode, and uh, it's gonna be landing and picture. It doesn't appear to be taken up in here. So let's just do um, picture and before. Background color, var, medium. And just like that, that will now match. And I, we need to change this background color as well. Hey. Let's, okay. I think that we got a problem. Apparently we needed that. So I'm going to copy this and redo everything just so I don't have to redo it. Um, and then we're going to go into contact. That's why we had it, because of the, the background. So contact background. 
that's why it looks weird because we have to turn that landing contact back around to medium. Dark mode, landing, contact, background. That should be medium. There we go. Now it, now it makes sense to have that padding. Uh, and then these should be primary accessible. So you are landing dot contact group dot group dot green. Which originally it was green, so um I need, okay, dot group. Okay, so not inside the A. Let's see, outside the A. I think green goes on top of the A's, so we're going to do that. And now they're accessible. Yeah, see, they get that green check mark, so that's what we want. Green check mark, that looks good. Um, and I think that's it, honestly. That's That's it. Okay, so this, this needs padding on it. The reason this is touching the corners, it's got padding. Let's fix that. So the input, we have a padding left of 24. Let's do that here as well. And that way when we click... See now it has now it has like space. This has space. It's because of the padding. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Hover, cool, cool. Okay, so I think that's dark mode. Uh, we're done. Wasn't so bad. Uh, so let's just go through the whole site. Let's look at it. So we had our home page. It's a little darker. Um, you know, I like to use this blue, uh, as a background because it's like, it's not as harsh as a black, black. Uh, and I think it's a pretty unique, it has like that midnight feel. So that's good. That's good. This looks fine. That's good. That's fine. Let's go to about. These are fine. So we want to see programs. Everything looking good. Opportunities. Um, now, oh, we also got history. They have, a, they have a long history. So we hit this button for history. That looks good. Um, you know, I could have easily had this history um, page underneath about, like have a drop down. But uh, web dev now is kind of steering more toward a simplified navigation where you don't have all these drop downs and everything is just easy to see at a glance. So when we go to our about page, if we want to go to that page, it's right there. Um, and it's also on the home page. Um, but having drop downs, having things hidden behind drop downs, it, it's just uh, extra work for the, uh, the user to find and navigate to the information they want. So all, almost all of my uh, navigation headers um, have no drop downs. I try to steer away from those unless you know it's absolutely needed. Um, so, yeah, we have our about us. We have our history page here where we go into the history. Um, we got opportunities. Gallery. Oh. Contact. Cool. This works. Yeah, and see this, I mean, I grabbed this from uh, Neotex from a video I already did, and this, this fits here too, because it's like, um, you know, once you change the fonts and, you know, everything is, uh, you got corners, squares, so it fits with the traditional design. I don't like this. So we have contact as contact form. I'm just going to take that out. Uh, so let's just go to contact. I don't think we need that, honestly. 
it says contact us, it goes to the form. Yeah, we'll just remove that. Uh, and that's it. That's dark mode. Um, I, you know, I wish it was longer and more complicated, but that's it. You know, if you just copy, you can just copy, uh, if you want to, like, add dark mode to your project, all you got to do uh, is copy the dark CSS and, you know, add it to the top of every page like I do here. Dark, I put it at the end so it overrides everything. Uh, so you just copy the dark.less and then you just grab the uh, dark.js, load that on every page. Um, and then that's it. You, and you also got to grab, you just got to grab that and grab the HTML right here for the dark toggle. That's it. Grab the button, put it where you want it, and then add the JS, add the dark.less or CSS if you're using CSS, and it'll just work. It That's the point of it. And then you just, um, whenever you want to do dark mode classes, um, opal.less, you know, you just got to do a body.dark mode and then, you know, add the uh, selector, the tree, however you want to call this thing, to get to the thing you want to change and change it. And then it's done. That's it. So you got a dark mode there. Everything's everything's taken care of. So you have dark mode here. And you know, everything's organized so that, you know, if I'm working on quote section, if I need to change something in dark mode for quote, I can just do it right here. I don't have to go to a separate dark.css to grab it. You know, it's it's all contained right here. Uh, all my media queries in order, all described to, um, you know, with their desktop size. So, yeah, this is, um, I think this is the best way to build websites. So we're all done here with dark mode. Um, I think that's everything I need to show you really to make it work. So um, I will be getting started on the next video, which is um, page speed optimizations and final QAs, like like how to get the fav icon and just everything that you need to, you know, all the boxes you need to check off before you launch. Uh, so that'll tell you everything you need to do to have ready and, and built and submitted and add it to your site so that it it's uh, it makes Google happy and it sees everything it wanted to see. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video for for that the page speed optimizations and final QA check. Uh, so thanks for watching.